My name is Jason Strong, and as co-founder and CEO of CodeUp, I'd like to say congratulations, Europa, on the accomplishment of graduating today. CodeUp is already hard enough, yet you did this with additional challenges that no other cohort has faced in CodeUp history before, and you rose to the occasion. I believe that you will be better prepared for this new job market because of your experience. I know you are all going to do great. Thank you to everybody who is the friends and family that have supported our students throughout this journey through graduation. And thank you to our staff who continues to deliver excellence, both in person and remotely. Again, congratulations, Europa. We are all very proud of you. And I think that you should be too. And now let me toss this over to Dimitri. Hey everyone, and welcome to Europa Developer Day. My name is Dimitri, and I'm the VP of Delivery with Coda. Although we normally host these in person or campus, today we're excited to be hosting you virtually. For those of you who don't know, Coda is a 20 week career accelerator program offering programs in software development and data science. We train students and get them placed in companies across Texas. Although we're operating virtually right now, don't worry, we have seven amazing presentations that you're about to see. To get us kick started, I'm going to pass it over to Christian Torres, our manager of employer partnerships. Christian, over to you. Thank you, Dimitri. Over the first 17 weeks of the program, Code of Students study full stack web development, learning HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and jQuery on the front end, Java, Spring, and MySQL on the back end. Over the last three weeks, they transitioned into full stack web developers, working in teams of three and four to design, build, and deploy full stack applications. Today, you can see a demonstration of these applications, showcasing the real and live features available in each other's sites. As we kick off the first group, keep an eye on how these students integrated what they learned here at Coda, some stuff they learned on their own. Coming up next, we have Team Kid Invest, made up of Huntley, Carlos Delgado, and Dana Leal. Good afternoon. I'm Dana Leal. My partners are Hong Lee and Carlos Delgado, and this is Kid Invest. In economic times such as these, many of us wish that we had managed our money better. But microeconomics isn't taught in most schools. Kid Invest was developed to solve this problem and make learning fun. This full stack application teaches kids about business and stock investments using a lemonade stand game and a stock trading feature. My contribution to this application included the leaderboard and the learning features. When registering, you'll be able to choose a character which will be featured later in the game. First time users will be shown pop-up tutorials giving them a tour of some of our pages, but we will be going over these together. Your profile contains your account balance, which is preloaded, your stock valuation, and your total portfolio value. These terms will be defined in popovers when you hover over the text. Also featured in the profile is the leaderboard. And as you can see, I'm currently in 12th place. In the learning page, users are introduced to some basic business and stock terminology, and they can take short quizzes to earn $500 per correct answer. These quizzes were developed with JavaScript and prompt users to answer all questions. When, after submitting, you will be able to review your answers and you can retake the quizzes without making additional earnings. Now I will hand you over to Hung. Thank you, Dana. My name is Hung Lee. I work on the back end part of this project and also the game features. Uh, I program this using Phaser and also MySQL. Okay, and this is the portfolio page that we previously saw. As you can see, I am logged into my own user and I have an account balance of $4,600. If I go to the Lemonade stand, I'll be able to run my business. On the right side here, you see my Lemonade inventory with the total amount of ingredients I currently have of each item. If I wanna go open the stand and actually sell some lemonades, you see here that also my inventory is also populated as well as all the lemonades and the ingredient makeups. So if I needed a lemonade, I would need two lemons, two sugars, and also two ice cubes. If I wanted to make a sale, I have to click this golden money icon in order to make the sale and increase our earnings. You can see here we made $11.55, and this popularity rating is also a 
bonus to how much our lemonade sell for. And we'll talk about that more later. But keep in mind here this radio, which is an add-on, which will generate this extra bonus to our income. If we do not make a sale in time, the buyer will walk away unhappy and will not make any sales. Okay, let's close up shop and collect the money. You can see here that the inventory has been updated. If we need to purchase more ingredients, we can go to the grocery store where we can increase our inventory by spending money that we earned. This will also be tracked in our transactions page where we can see our most recent purchases. As you can see here, we've made these recent purchases as well as their total costs. Also, if we wanted to check how much we made during our lemonade business, we can go into the recent sales. And we, today we made $52.80. And finally, we have the add-ons feature which featured that radio that we saw in the game. If we purchase additional add-ons, it will increase our popularity which increases how much money the users can make and also populates it in the game visually. This about wraps up the features for our lemonade business. And I'll pass it off now to my partner, Carlos, to talk about the stocks. Thank you, Hung. My name is Carlos Delgado, and I worked on the Stock API and Styling. Now, I will walk you through our stock features. As previously mentioned, the details of the stock page will be available as a pop-up tutorial for first-time users. Stock terms are also defined in popovers. To achieve the dynamic stock fluctuations, we use FinHub's real-time stock data API to simulate the 20 kid-friendly companies that allow users to invest in. Upon viewing today's stock details, like open price, market price, low and high, we can make a purchase. For example, let's go to Xavier's Exotic Pets. We're gonna buy two stocks for $95.44. Now we have an option to sell. As we go into our profile, we can see our two stocks reflected in our table. We can also view our details, our stock valuation for our total stocks, and our account balance. Going on to our stock transactions, we have a list of stocks that we've bought and sold. For example, down here, we can see whether we bought two shares from Xavier's Pets and we invested $95.44. We sold one share from George's Gaming Corner and we made $2.64. This wraps up our presentation. On behalf of my team and I, we appreciate your time on viewing our capstone project. We're also grateful for the opportunity to develop an application to help kids learn fiscal knowledge and financial responsibility. And if you're looking for passionate full stack developers, invest in us, we don't kid around. You can meet us in our team Zoom link below. Not our curricula are created equal. In our search and work, we found boot camps that teach 20 plus technologies and degrees that only teach C++. At Coda, we reverse engineered the curriculum to directly meet what our hiring managers are looking for. By focusing on the enterprise technology stack with Java, we're able to prioritize the depth of knowledge over breadth and instill the best practices of debugging, problem solving, and learning new technologies. See what the curriculum can produce in this next group. Let's welcome Team Micro with Paris, Matthew Murphy, Dalvin Cash, and John Santos. Hi, my name is Paris Tice, and along with my colleagues, John Santos, Dalvin Cash, and Matt Murphy, we are Team MyPub. While creating this platform, some of the technologies and languages we used are Java, JavaScript, and Spring Boot. We styled my using a combination of CSS, HTML, and Bootstrap. My contributions to this project were styling the user interface on the front end and assisting with the user experience on the back end. MyPup is a platform created to connect people with dog breeders, taking the hassle out of finding the perfect, happy, and healthy companions. Now, I will pass it along to my colleague, John, who will talk more about the user experience. Uh, thank you, Paris. My name is John Santos. My contributions 
include assisting with the design and implementation of user forms and APIs on the front end and database design and implementation on the back end. I will now talk you through the breeder experience in order to demonstrate how easy MyPup has made it to connect breeders with potential buyers. Upon initial visit to MyPup, a breeder would register a user by clicking on the sign up option. To begin the process, the breeder must first select the breeder role and then provide user credentials and contact information. If they choose to do so, they can upload a profile image. To demonstrate how easy it is for a breeder to create a post of their dog, I will log in with a breeder profile that I previously created. Once logged in, a breeder can create a post by simply selecting create post on a navigation bar and provide information about their dog. At this time, they can upload an image shared from their local disk, social media, or by providing a link to anywhere on the internet. We've done this by the implementation of the file stack API. Once the post is created, the breeder can visit their profile page to verify that the new post is ready, readily available to visitors and potential buyers. I will now hand this presentation off to my colleague, Cash. Thank you, John. My name is Cash and my contributions to our site were the breeder post controller and assisting on the back end and styling along with pairs. But I will be taking you through the buyer story today. As a potential buyer, it's always easy to fall in love with a cute puppy, but it'll be fast forward six months. Would a loving little puppy still be the perfect match for you and your family? My pup has to connect breeders with potential buyers for the best uh, pets suited for the individual lifestyles. Here you will be able to register as a buyer and fill in this information. I've taken the liberty to go ahead and do that already. After registering for our site, a buyer will have the option to answer just a few questions that may help us gather more information in hopes of helping us recommend the best possible breed for them and their family. We're going to select French Bulldog. After recommending the breeds, the breeder, the buyer, excuse me, will be able to research those specific breeds and gather more information that's being pulled from a dog API. After gathering the information, the user will be able to go to our breeder posts and search throughout them to find the perfect companion for them. I'll now hand things off to my colleague, Matt. Thank you, Cash. My contributions to this app include controllers for the user experience and the separation of user roles. And with that comes the admin role. Allow me to draw out a scenario for you. Let's say a breeder is having an issue deleting a post with obscene content in it or is unable to update an image of their companion because the pup grew up and still needs a loving home. This is where the admin comes in to save the day. And again, by the power of FileStack API, we can go in, select a file from our local storage, and a few simple clicks, upload a new photo, and voila, your dog can now find a new home. I would like to thank everyone for allowing us to show you our app. Again, we are Team MyPup. If you are interested in adopting a few MyPup developers, please contact us. Thanks guys. While the capstone is the course culmination, our developers have been well-trained in project learning since the beginning. Through pair programming, group projects, and individual challenges, they develop a robust profile visible in the GitHub profiles. That means that on day one of the job, our devs have actually spent hundreds of hours developing. Keep that in mind as we hear from Rachel Castaneda, David Ortega, and Yasmin Menchaca from Team What's Up Business. Hi everyone and welcome to our capstone. My name is Rachel Castaneda and I am here with David Ortega and Yasmin Menchaca. And we are here to show you what's up SA. Now due to COVID-19 and the shelter in place order, we do know that it's hard to get out right now, but we do look forward to jumping back into our community and having fun. Our app What's Up SA is an event lister that aggregates events happening in San Antonio. Currently we do have events available for streaming online 
and events to look forward to after. Users are able to conveniently view all events on a single page, create events, and share events of their interest with their friends, while admins are able to approve and delete events as a way of moderating the site. We do have a splash page that shows a COVID-19 message right here, and we are mobile responsive. And we do have a dynamic nav bar for each type of user. Now I'm gonna pass it over to Yasmin and she's gonna show how to register, log in, and submit an event. Thank you, Rachel. Hi everybody, my name is Yasmin and I will be going over our registration, login, and event submission forms. Here on our index page, we can access the registration form. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on register. And in order to proceed with registration, all requirements on the form must be met. Our registration page was built with Spring Security to prevent an account compromise. And we've also utilized the Filestack API to allow users to upload photos. Here, I'll upload my profile image for my new account. Once completed, I'll be redirected to the login page. Our login page includes the detection of incorrect usernames and or passwords. Now that I've logged in, let's gain people's attention and submit an event. So here, I'll click on the Submit Event button. And before submitting an event, we do make the user aware that event posts will be reviewed by an admin. We also ask that they review our homepage to prevent submitting a duplicate event. I'm gonna add my title and my description to my event. I think I'm gonna go with some classic Simpsons trivia party on Zoom. I've inputted my title along with my description. And here on the bottom, we do have a categories feature. Due to shelter at home requirements, we've added a live stream category. And right below, We've utilized the time picker and date picker jQuery plugins so we can easily retrieve that information from our database throughout the site. So I'll set my time for five. I'm gonna have the event end at about eight. I'll set my date for Friday the 17th and an end date. Also here on this form, we utilize the Filestack API for event uh, images. And so I'll upload my Simpsons image, hit upload. And once I hit the submit event button, I will be prompted that my event will be reviewed by an admin. Once I hit okay, I'll be redirected to my new profile page. And since I'm a new user, I don't have any activity. So I'll go ahead and hand it off to David. Thank you, Yasmin. I'm gonna walk you through some of the other actions you have available to you on WhatsApp SA as a user, as well as some admin roles. As an admin, you have the ability to approve, edit, or delete event submissions. First, I'll show you the pending events page which is where submitted events go to be edited and approved. If I wanted to update the title of Yasmin's event, I would be able to do so like this. Now that I'm happy with the submission, I can approve it and it will show up on the homepage. When you click on an event in the homepage, it will take you to the details page that shows you more information about the event and gives you the option to bookmark an event to your profile using the I'm interested button. If you're interested in an event, your profile picture will show up in the events detail page and allow other users to discover your profile and send them a friend request. Let's go ahead and navigate to another one of our, our events. And here I can click on Yasmin's profile. Our friend request system was built using Hibernate's JPQL language, which interacts with our database and has four states, pending, accepted, denied, and unfriended. I have Yasmin as it as a friend, and that allows me to visit her profile from my own and check out any events that she's interested in, such as these. This will make it easier to connect and spend time together. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pass it back to Rachel to conclude our presentation. Thank you, David. Now I'm gonna show you our About Us page where you can find our links and contact us. You can find our LinkedIn, GitHub, and alumni links to contact us. Thank you for looking at our presentation and our app What's Up essay. We hope you've enjoyed it and found your new go-to spot for finding events in San Antonio. We all know that despite those popular stereotypes, development doesn't happen in the dark room by yourself. Recognizing that collaboration is a key workspace skill, we focus on teaching teamwork and interpersonal skills throughout the program. Lab instruction means working closely with instructors, teaching assistants, alumni, and fellow students that represents a wide range of experience levels. Moreover, an emphasis on pair programming and group projects prepares our graduates not only to work with code, but also work well with others. 
Watch how the next group pests the baton amongst themselves. Coming up next, we have Team Kitsune. Hello, my name is Cheney Brown. I'm one of the developers of Kitsune. Kitsune is a site made for users to organize articles, text, and videos pertaining to academic and personal development. This is our landing page that features our custom mascot and information about our website. At the bottom of the page, we have links to developer profiles. We at Kitsune believe that everybody should have access to free learning materials, so we designed the site with accessibility in mind. The colors used are colorblind friendly and the fonts used are recommended by the ADA for dyslexic web users. We are also in the works of including semantic HTML markup so that screen readers can also use our website. Today, we are going to make a profile for our friend Kat, who's interested in learning animal development. Here we can fill in her username, her first name, last name, an email, and a password. And now that Kat is registered, we can log into her account. Navigating to our dashboard, we don't have any posts at this time, but that's okay because we'll add some. First, we'll make a blog to put our post in. Since Kat is interested in animal behavior, we'll title our blog that. You notice we have a typo now, but that's okay, we can fix it later. The handle is a unique search identifier that is auto assigned if left blank. And we have categories that further enhance our search results. So we'll do this one, science and animals, and we submit it. And now we see the link to our blog. And we did have a typo, which is okay because we have an option to edit that. So we can fix the spelling error, resubmit, and we see that the blog has the correct title now. So before we put post into our blog, we can take a look to see what a post looks like on another blog. So we can see all, find one that interests us, and view it. Since we do like the post in this blog, we'll go ahead and follow it. Now going back to our dashboard, it is populated with the post from our followed blogs. Before we make a post, we should see how to search. So we go to our search tips where we can see the custom search sites included and resources for finding credible sources and using advanced search operators that can be used in our Google custom search. So to Google custom search, we can put in a query and return the results. We can filter by general knowledge, ebooks, or textbooks, or filter by website. We're going to click this link and put it in our profile. And you may notice that it navigates us away from Kitsune, but that's okay because we need to copy this link. And when we go back, our search results persist in the browser because of a feature added to Google Custom Search. So now I'm going to hand it off to Shelby to make a post for Cat's blog. My name is Shelby Hughes, and I created the post and user functionality. Taking the link that Cheney gave us, we can create a new post. And submit. Looking at the post, we can see that there's an error, but that's okay because we can edit it. We can also delete a post. A cool feature of our site, the YouTube API search. We wanted the user to be able to search for a video, find a video, and post it to their blog. Rocked. Music and dance. Now we can see there's a video posted to our blog. On the all post page, we notice that there is a reblog button and we can take a post that somebody else or you created and put it on our blog. So we like this one. Let's reblog it. And it is now on our profile, on our blog. Let's say that you wanted to search the site for a blog fitting a certain handle or category. We can do that with the site search. It searches blogs table in our database Matching handles or categories. Look up history. We like this one. And we're currently following it. Let's go to our account information. Here we can see the user's account, the edit and delete button. Let's edit the account. 
Now the user's information has been updated and we can log out to log back in another day. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on GitHub, LinkedIn, or the alumni portal. Thank you. Projects like you're seeing today aren't built overnight. They require foresight and planning. What's the core functionality of the application? How should the databases be set up? Who's going to work on what? And when is it due? Answering these questions begin with our curriculum modules on project management and web design. Just like in the real world, Code of Grads leverage the agile methodology and project management tools like GitHub Projects to successfully bring their ideas to life. Take a look on how this next group has divided the work and managed task completion. We now go to Miguel, Crystal, Matthew, and Brianna with Team Pantry Chef. Hello, my name is Brianna Vinueva, and I'm going to be speaking to you today about our application named Pantry Chef. Have you ever found yourself tired of your everyday meals and want to try out a new recipe, but you're unsure of where to start with the item already have in your pantry? Well, we have an option for you. Introducing our user-friendly cooking aid for users of any culinary skill level. Coming onto our site, you're going to see our landing page achieved by using Bootstrap and custom CSS. Here, we have the option for you to search recipes without the obligation to create an account. If you choose to sign up, you're going to click on our register tab above on our dynamic nav bar or the get started button in the center of the page. Here is where you will create your account. For demonstration purposes, I have already created an account and it just so happens that I need a recipe for tonight. After logging in, you will be redirected to your profile page. Here, you are going to see three options. The ability to view your shopping list and your created recipes, as well as the option to update your profile information. And I think I want to update my name to Brie to personalize my profile. Save changes, and it's all done. And now I'm going to hand you over to Matthew. Thank you, Brianna. Hello, everyone. I'm Matthew Hedler, and today, I'm gonna be showcasing the create and edit recipe functionalities. For the purpose of this demonstration, I've already pre-filled most of the form fields on the create recipe page. As you can see, I've created one of my favorite recipes, fettuccine Alfredo. Users can add a title, ingredients, directions, select a category, and with the help of FileStack API, you can even add an image. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one here. And then I'll hit submit. As a user, I'm also able to edit my recipes. So I'm gonna go ahead on the recipes page and try to find mine. Here it is right here. So as I scroll down through the posting, I can click this button to go ahead and edit my recipe. I'm actually gonna go ahead and give it a title, the best fettuccine Alfredo. And maybe I left out an ingredient so I can go ahead and add salt and pepper. And let me go ahead and add serve and enjoy because that's the last step I need. And maybe I want to give it a secondary category as well. So I'll go ahead and choose American. And I'll leave off an image, but it's going to show the same image it did before. So I'll hit submit. And on the recipe page, you'll see that things have changed to best fettuccine Alfredo. You know what? I'm actually feeling beef stew for dinner tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and check out this recipe right here. Oh, wow. It's actually posted by The Rock. That's awesome. So I'm going to click this link and I was actually taken to that user's profile. So here you can see their information as well as any recipes that that user has created. Through the use of Java, JavaScript, and Timeleaf, I've contributed to these web pages showcased. I will now be passing it on to Miguel. Thank you, Matthew. Hi, my name is Miguel Vera and I'm here to talk about one of the contributions I worked on, which is our Pantry Chef API search. Utilizing a combination of jQuery, HTML, CSS, Ajax, and the Spoonacular API, we were able to create a recipe search feature that will let you find recipes by ingredients through two GET requests from the API. So let's check it out. So say I want to make a dessert tonight, and I got to find some ingredients. Well, I'm going to search my pantry, search my fridge, and look for some ingredients. And then once I find what I have, I'm going to put them in here. So today I have some apples, eggs, flour, pastry dough, and sugar. And then I'm gonna search for this. Once I hit the search button, I'm gonna get 
the first get request that will show the recipes based on those ingredients. So looking down here, I got a couple hits. Well, this one looks pretty good. So then I'm gonna hit the view recipe button. And once I hit that, this is when the second get request to the API will happen, which, which will then display all the information for that recipe. So starting from the top, we have the title, Quick Apple Pies by Mom's Dish. And then we have the image. And if we scroll down, we have the category. But since there's no category associated with this recipe at the time, I created a message in order to notify them in case they run into this and any other recipe. And here it is, sorry, no cuisines associated with the recipe at the moment. So we look down, and here's the ingredients. They match what I, you know, what I had, so I'm pretty satisfied with this. I look at the directions, doesn't seem that bad. And I get to the bottom, and it tells me I could see you know, the, the source of the recipe. Well, let's check it out. So I go down here, up here, I hit the source, opens up in a new window, and voila, here it is. Well, that concludes our Pantry Chef API search, and now we'll pass it to Crystal. Thank you, Miguel. My name is Crystal Thibodeau, and today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about our database recipes, commenting on them, as well as our shopping list functionality. So as well as our search functionality through the Spoonacular API, our search is also dynamic for our database recipes. Today, I'm going to be looking for a recipe with pork or fish. Let's check out pork. Here you see the filtered results from our database, as well as the new filtered recipes from the API. Now, I see I've actually made this recipe before. By clicking on the recipe, I do have the option to leave a comment. Awesome recipe. Now, if I return to that recipe, my new comment will be showed below, where I have the option to also edit or delete that comment. However, I still need a recipe for dinner. Let's check out fish. Yum, fish tacos. By clicking on this recipe, I see I have almost all the ingredients I need to make this recipe. So let's check out my shopping list. Here, I will add the coleslaw and seasoning. Now I'm going to head out to the store to pick up these ingredients for my wonderful recipe. And if you'd like to pick up some wonderful developers, check out our, the links on our About Us page today. Ask any developer in the room. Knowing how to code doesn't make you a professional developer. The program leverages a parallel curricula of software development and professional development. Our placement team works with our students to develop a professional portfolio and prepare them for life after graduation. We conduct mock technical interviews, craft career strategies, and provide individual coaching. By the time they step in a room with you, they know what to expect and what's expected of them, which means a better experience for you and for our developers. Imagine being in a room with the next developers coming up. Let's bring up Swole Mates. This team is made up of Alexander Bonowitz, Gaston Tarango, and Chris Sear. Good afternoon. My name is Gaston Tarango, and with my partners Alex Bonowitz and Chris Sear, we are the creators of Swole Mates. Swole Mates is an application that allows users to find workout partners in their area by searching posts and having one-on-one -on -one chats with other users. I created the styling and the sign-up page, which I will now walk you through. Welcome to our page, Swole Mates. Let's click Get Swole and get started. You'll create a user and register. Now, after successfully registering, I will now pass it on to my partner, Alex, who will walk you through creating a post and editing profile. Thanks, Gaston. Hi, my name is Alexander Bonowitz. Uh, I'm responsible for the workout posts functionality, as well as the user profile edit functionality and the Spring Boot security. I'm going to be taking you through how our users access creating a post, viewing that, and editing any issues. So when your user first signs up and logs in, they're first brought to this available workouts page where they can see other users' posts such as um, a casual workout or maybe something a little more intense. Um, in order for them to get started at the same process, they'd go up to our more tab and access workout. Once a user has pressed that tab, they will uh, see a slight card that allows them to enter a basic title that um, doesn't have to go into too much detail. And then a body, which 
usually the user would like to enter a little more detail into so to catch uh, someone's attention, maybe a specific time frame or something like that. Once you've completed that, the user would save a post and their post would then be brought onto the main page so that anyone can see it, um, access it, stuff such as that. Um, let's say there's an issue though. Let's say they forgot to um, ask someone to bring some water, for instance. You can simply click that edit post button if you are the user of that post and then update it by pressing the update post button. And just like that, the post has been updated. The user may also delete a post if there's an issue. Next, the user can also go to their profile page to see available information on themselves, such as their email, their age, their zip code, anything that might be important to themselves. They can also change this information if, let's say, there's an issue with this. Let's say they entered the wrong age. The user can simply change it on this edit profile page and hit save changes, and the user has corrected their information. I will now pass it on to my partner, Chris, who will talk to you about Talk.js. Thanks, Alex. My name is Chris Sear, and I'm responsible for part of the database design, the aesthetic design, and now I'm gonna to talk to you about the communication service that we've implemented for Soulmates. So we all know what it's like to be super motivated to go out and exercise, and we also know what it's like to completely lose that motivation when the slightest hang up or distraction occurs. That's why we wanted a way for users at Swolemates to be able to connect easily and quickly in real time. To accomplish this, we used an API called Talk.js. This feature allows users to connect with each other with a single click of their mouse. So we'll use Alex's post that he just created as an example. The user would go find the post they liked and they see that they would like to work out at 5 p.m. Simply click the chat button and users will be connected to the doc.js interface. So here, the user will simply send a message saying they'd like to work out. And immediately I'm notified by the checks that one, it was sent, two, it was read. The receiver is instantly receiving a notification on their desktop that they were messaged. So we're trying to make these things instant in order to get people to stop wasting time planning and spend more time working out. Lastly, on our page, we have our About Us. Here you can find more information about Gaston, Alex, and myself. Uh, it includes our LinkedIn, our GitHub, and our alumni portal profile. In conclusion, we hope that Swalmates will make finding a friend to exercise with easy, fun, and motivating. We want to thank everyone for taking part in this presentation today. And if your company is looking for strong developers who will work out, remember Swalmates. Thank you. Before we bring out our final team, we would like to thank our Capstone instructional team, Daniel, Sophie, and Samuel. The last three weeks, they've emulated roles as lead developers and have guided our students to their own answers across the entire development life cycle resulting in these amazing products. Moreover, we would like to thank our entire instructional team who has worked with this entire class to produce it into the day as we see here today. Finally, let's bring out Nolan, William, and Ruben of Team Coda. Hi, my name is Ruben Montanez, along with Will Stevens and Ellen Siegler. We are Coda. During our time at Coda, we realized there was a need in our community. The need was for our Code Up community to stay connected and find a way to help each other. We created a platform for current students and graduates to interact and help each other become better developers. Whether it be finding or being a mentor, anxiety over whiteboard, technical interview questions, knowing of a job opportunity, or just needing help with your code that it isn't working. I'm gonna pass it off to Nolan, who's gonna help us with the registration part of the uh, website. Hi, I'm Nolan Siegler. Some of my contributions were assisting with model and controller design, creating the REST API used in the question round section, and integrating the APIs using our file uploads, collaborative coding environments, and community chat. The first step in becoming a member of the community is to register for an account. We used email whitelisting and custom Spring security configurations to create a more secure community with role-based permission sets for each endpoint. Users can also upload their profile image and resume using FileStack API.
The last step in our registration process is for the user to input their skills. This allows other users to connect with them based on common interests or needs. Now that registration is complete, I'm gonna pass it off to Ruben to talk about some of our dashboard features. Working with Spring Boot and Timely, I use the model view controller design pattern for my contributions to the dashboard, along with my contributions to the front end. Once a user is logged in and authenticated, there are four topics we felt were critical to a developer's success. Technical interview questions, whiteboard problems, mentorship, and finding a job. Users are able to create a post review, update, and delete from the dashboard. They are able, also able to view the two most recent posts within each of the threads in the community, and also go into any one of the four topics and view all the content related to that topic. What sets us apart from other platforms is our content is only uploaded via our network and is validated through user feedback. I'm gonna hand it off to Will to speak about the features. Hi, my name is William Stevens. I worked primarily on our server side functionality, specifically with servlets and integrating our database with Hibernate. I also worked on user interaction with our content. Users are able to add comments to all posts on our site and edit them. Users are also able to upvote and downvote all of the posts and comments on our site. Our upvote downvote system ties into our functionality in three main ways. First, we're using JavaScript to sort comments based on their rating in live time. Second, on each of our four main sections, users can sort posts based on their rating. Here in the interview section, this sorting allows users to help refine our question pool. They're able to upvote quality content or downvote misleading or incorrect information. They can also leave comments to new students to help refine their knowledge. From here, users can jump into our question round, which cycles through conversational topics that are likely to come up during an interview. These are the same questions that our users helped create and cultivate. Finally, we developed an algorithm that is more likely to select highly rated posts, but also occasionally cycles through new posts to give them a chance to be evaluated and downvoted posts to give them a second look. Users can click to show the answer and of course leave a rating and a comment. Next, I'm gonna hand it off to Nolan to talk about the mentorship page. Our mentorship board allows users to request assistance or share knowledge by creating a post. Optionally, you can even upload an image of your code to make the question clear. A key to connecting our network is direct messaging. We use Talk.js to create our chat service that can be accessed from any page. Here, I'll start a chat with one of our members, Ruben. Looks like he's seen the message. All right, awesome. Our community uploaded whiteboard questions combined with our real-time collaborative coding environments are a great tool. Our environments are built using Firebase and Ace Editor. They provide users with a place to practice whiteboard interviews, pair programming, and even more. From preparing for interviews, to posting job announcements, and everything in between, stay connected and code on. If you'd like to meet with the Codon developers, please visit us in our Zoom channel listed below. Finally, and most importantly, we would like to thank you, friends and family who are watching today. Without your support during this journey, none of this would be possible. Thank you for trusting them over the last 20 weeks, for allowing them to miss family functions, fun events, and the occasional chore here and there. As you saw in the video that played before, you are just as crucial as anybody in this journey. If you missed it, don't worry. We'll share it with our devs as soon as we're done here. If you're watching live, we encourage you to go to codeup.com forward slash Europa. Once again,
On behalf of the CODA staff, my name is Christian Torres. Thank you for watching. So doing here. It's over.